Hello, good morning. Thanks for joining in today. Today we are going to talk about kidney infections. A scientific name for it is pyelonephritis. So what causes kidney infections? Kidney infections or pyelonephritis caused by bacteria. The commonest bacteria that causes pyelonephritis is called E. coli. 90% or over 90% of patients who have pyelonephritis happens because of E. coli. Other bacteria which are less common include Proteus, Klebsiella, Enterococcus and also in very occasional patients, very uncommonly, Staphylococcus can also cause infection of the kidneys. How do these bacteria get to our kidneys? So as I explained in my previous videos, so this is what the urinary tract looks like. So our kidneys, left and the right kidney, the two tubes that come out of the kidney called the ureters, they come and join our urinary bladder where the urine is stored before we pass the urine from our urethra. So this is the tube which leads from the bladder and passes the urine out. In the case of men, the urethra is much longer as compared to women. Now, normally this is a very close system and the urine in the kidneys and the ureters and the bladder and coming out is all sterile. It has got no bacteria in it. So if a normal person urine is checked, there will not be any bacteria in it. And the good thing about passing urine every so often, every few hours, it keeps the system clean. So it keeps flushing it through and nothing stays behind to get infected. And there is no residue of urine in the bladder. If the urine stays there for too long, then obviously there's a risk of infection in that urine because it is not moving. Because if you look at a pond where the water is not moving, it eventually gets dirty. Same thing happens, the urine is not moving out of the bladder completely. Some of it stays in there or, or most of it stays in there. We can't empty it completely. And we come to the reasons in a minute why that can happen. Then that urine can become infected. Infection coming from the top is very, very uncommon. In very occasional patient, very uncommonly, infection can come into the kidneys through the bloodstream if there is infection somewhere else in our body. But that is a very uncommon cause of urine infection or kidney infection. The commonest cause is bacteria coming from below. So where the opening of the urethra is, where we pass our urine from, that is not a very clean area, both in men and women. It's more common in women as compared to men because the urethra in women is much shorter because they do not have a penis. So they have a much shorter urethra. So the infection travels into the bladder far more easily as compared to in men. If the local area is not clean, where the urine comes out from, then there is a site where bacteria will multiply and grow and they will grow up the, up the urethra, infect the urine in the bladder, especially the urine is not being emptied completely. And eventually that infected urine will go up the tubes into the ureter and infect the kidneys and cause pyelonephritis. So that is the commonest cause of urine infection or kidney infection why is this so important? It is so important because it is not an uncommon infection. It can happen anywhere from infants all the way to old age. As I said earlier, women are more predisposed to developing these infections as compared to men because the urethra in women is far shorter as compared to men. Hence, the risk of infection traveling up is much, much easier. So what puts us at risk of developing urine infection. As I said earlier, urine infection can happen without any underlying problems with the urinary tract. However, there are certain conditions which put us at a higher risk of developing urine infection. So for example, if there is an enlarged prostate gland in men and the urine from the bladder does not empty completely every time we go to the toilet and there's always some urine staying in there, that urine has a higher risk of getting infected. And one, once it gets infected, it can travel up the ureters to cause infections of the kidney. Another example in some patients, especially little children, they are born with very weak 
muscles in the area where the ureter joins our bladder. So the urine is constantly going up into the into back into the kidneys. So when the child passes urine from the kidneys into the bladder, when they try and V, they try and pass urine. Some of the urine also goes up into the ureter and then can infect the kidneys. If there's a stone in the ureter which is blocking the passage of urine, that can infect the kidneys. If there is an operation on the kidney performed for whatever reason, for stones or for cancer or whatever, because the closed system has been opened now because of surgery, then there is a high risk of infection. As I said earlier, in a small percent of patients, if there is an infection somewhere else in the body, say in the heart or the lungs or the intestine, the infection can travel through the bloodstream and then can infect the kidneys. What else puts it at high risk of infection of the kidneys is pregnancy. The enlarged uterus presses onto the tubes and also the bladder so it does not empty properly cause infection of the kidneys. Diabetes also increases the risk of infection because diabetic patients are at a high risk of developing infections as compared to normal people. And also because their urine contains glucose, because they cannot utilize glucose properly, they've got high blood sugar level and the glucose, uh, the sugar comes into the urine and the bacteria like to grow in urine which contains too much sugar or glucose. Also patients who have had say a treatment for cancer or they are on immunosuppressant therapy like they have had transplant surgery done. So they, they are on medication which is suppressing their immunity. So they are at a high risk of developing any type of infection including kidney infections. So what are the symptoms of urine infection? The commonest symptoms of urine infection is fever and chills. Patients feel very cold, they're shivering, and they have got rigors. Abdominal pain, especially in the flanks on both sides. If the right kidney is infected, then in the right flank. If the left kidney is infected, then in the left flank. If both kidneys are infected, then perhaps both flanks. Also, they get pain just above their pubic bone in the front because that's where the bladder is. They are passing more urine and they want to go more frequently to pass urine. And when they pass urine, it stings. The urine is very cloudy and becomes very foul smelling urine. Sometimes they can even see blood in the urine. So what tests are performed to diagnose kidney infection? The commonest performed test is a simple urine test. So doctor will give you a bottle to do a sample of urine and when you take the sample to the doctor's practice, they will put a little dipstick into it and check for pus, blood infection, etc. And that will confirm that whether you have got urine infection or not. And that is a very simple test to be done. Depending on your symptoms, if your symptoms are quite diagnostic and also if your urine dipstick test is confirming that there is an infection, then the doctor can start you some general antibiotics which are given for urine infection. However, what they do, just to confirm what type of urine infection you have, they will send the same sample of urine to the laboratory to check under the microscope to see what sort of bacteria are causing the infection. Because as you know, different bacteria require different antibiotics. Blood tests, the doctor might want to do to check whether you have got infection in the body or not. Simple blood tests can be done and also to check for kidney function, whether the kidneys are functioning normally or not. Ultrasound and CT scan can be performed, although not necessary, just to confirm urine infection. They are usually limited to people who are getting repeated urinary infection and who are suspected to have very large prostate gland or stone in the bladder or stone in the ureter or had surgery or whatever reason. Just to make sure there is no structural abnormality in the urinary tract which might be causing repeat urinary infections. So those are the commonest tests which are performed. So what is the treatment for kidney infections? Vast majority of kidney infections just require antibiotics and in two or three days the symptoms will get better. However important thing about antibiotics is 
The doctor will give you a course of antibiotics ranging from one week to two weeks, depending on the type of infection you have. And you must finish the course of antibiotics rather than stopping it after two or three days when your symptoms have settled down. The reason is because not all the bacteria might be killed in two to three days time, although you're feeling better, but the bacteria might still be there. And also, if not all the bacteria are killed by the antibiotic, then the remainder bacteria can develop resistant to the antibiotic and might not work in the future to clear the bacteria completely. Occasionally, minor procedures are required. For example, if the patient has got a catheter, which is a cause of infection, then the catheter might need to be changed. Occasionally, if the patients have got a very large prostate or a stone blocking the ureter or the kidney or something, these patients might require operations, which can be major operations. So what is the prognosis of kidney infection? The prognosis of kidney infections is extremely good because the mainstay of treatment is antibiotics and antibiotics work quite well. It is important for these infections to be picked up early and treated aggressively and treated completely. So it's very important for you to take the antibiotics for a full course rather than taking for a few days and follow the advice of the doctor. I hope you found this video informative and if you did then please do remember to give us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Until then, thanks for watching.